Today marks the beginning of the church liturgical year, its Advent. We have been in the long green season of Pentecost for half a year, and now the liturgical colors are blue as the church ushers in a new season of spiritual preparation and expectation. Tim and Kristen and Ellery represented the whole family, which includes Avery, Avery and Soren, lit the first of the four candles on our Advent wreath signifying the first of four Sundays in Advent. Though this year, it's actually more like three and a half Sundays <laughs> because Christmas Eve falls on the fourth Sunday. A brief history shows the source of this tradition. The church in Western Europe, in Spain and France, or Gaul in the fourth and fifth centuries began observing St. Martin's Lent, which extended from November 11th, St. Martin's Day, to Epiphany, January 6th. It was a time of fasting and penitence as candidates prepared for baptism. These catechumens were baptized on Epiphany, the 12th day of Christmas. Advent grew out of this tradition and was reduced in the Middle Ages with a lower level of fasting and penitence to the four weeks before Christmas. So what does this season of Advent mean for us today? In this fast-paced culture where Christmas arrives at the Rite Aid on October 15th. <laughs> Have you ever heard of the season of hollow thank mass? It all runs together. And then there's Black Friday and Cyber Monday, and now there's Cyber Week, admonishing us to get it going on our shopping. And we did, and we have, and we will. Record levels of activity and money spent have been set in brick and mortar stores, and even more online, and particularly on our smartphones. It's a hectic time. It's frantic, really. We rush about shopping, going to parties, or hosting them, making big meals, no time to get it all done, presents wrapped and mailed, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You all know what I'm talking about. But with Advent, the church in her wisdom has invited us to take some time to come back to ourselves to recognize once again what we are here for ultimately, to live in the world awake to a new set of realities which began with God's incarnation through Jesus Christ who makes all things new. Jesus tells his disciples and us in today's gospel, beware, be alert, for you do not know when the time will come. Keep awake. Jesus uses the example of the fig tree to illustrate this watching for the signs of renewal, for when Christ will come again making all things new. For new life, like the tiny buds on a seemingly dead and dry branch, often is hard to perceive. But as the thaw comes after winter time, you wait and you watch, and all of a sudden, the branches are loaded down with blooms. And then when the leaves grow green on the branches, you know summer is near. Every year it is hard to imagine when we look at the dead, slick leaves and brown, muddy grass and bare limbs and empty gardens that spring will ever come but then, all of a sudden, life that was there all along springs forth again. New growth hidden in the muck and mud of late winter. The kingdom of God is like this. Yes, there's a lot of mud and muck and cold in this world. But new abundant life is always there too, hidden waiting to spring forth. 
to be seen or recognized by those who have eyes to see. We are to be alert to notice the signs of the kingdom of God, or what Verna Dozier calls the dream of God breaking into our world. The vision expressed in her book, The Dream of God, greatly influenced Martin Luther King and is especially manifested in his iconic I Have a Dream speech on the steps of the Lincoln Memorial. Remember, I have a dream today where little bo black boys and black girls will be able to join hands with little white boys and white girls as sisters and brothers. I mentioned Verna Dozier because Michael Curry, our amazing, tremendous, wonderful presiding bishop, spent the day with us at our clergy conference this last Tuesday. And he spoke of the modern day prophet who is an African American educator, laywoman, who introduced him back in the 80s to what would become his ongoing theme as presiding bishop of how we can live and articulate the great dream of God, anchored in the living presence of a relationship with Jesus. This Jesus who lives as source, the vine to which we branches are attached. Bernard Dozier's vision captivated me in seminary, and I was thrilled once more to hear about her. And I just wanted to take a moment to introduce her to you here in the Christ and St. Luke's part of the Episcopal, Episcopal branch of the Jesus Movement. We long to see and even participate in that inbreaking of the dream of God, where love conquers hate and division, where reconciliation overcomes violence, where compassion and generosity <clears throat> overcome selfishness and envy. Like the school children reported on NBC Nightly News this past week, collecting warm clothes to give homeless children, or a child selling lemonade to raise money to buy pajamas for needy kids. A young girl collected toiletry items in packs to give homeless folk after befriending, befriending a homeless woman on the little girl's daily walk to school. Even some of these enterprising, generous children raise money on GoFundMe accounts online. These kids were more interested in giving than getting. Or maybe you are hungry to see glimpses of the glory of God in this benighted world. You long to have the eyes of your heart enlightened like Paul prayed for the Ephesians in last week's epistle. He wrote, I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him, so that with the eyes of your heart enlightened, you may know what it is the hope to which he has called you. We long to see, as Elizabeth Barrett Browning sees in her poem, Aurora Lee, earth's crammed with heaven and every common bush of fire with God. But only he who sees takes off his shoes. The rest sit around it and pluck blackberries. During Advent, we are being invited to enter into what the ancient Greeks call Kairos time, which is different from Kronos time, clock time, linear time, by which we live our daily lives. Kairos has to do with special time, appointed time, time out of time. 
The lessons and hymns during Advent were carefully created to help us avoid rushing through December to Christmas Day without taking time to ponder. Why do we need God to intervene in our lives? And what must we do to get ready? To prepare our hearts for the coming of the Christ child. To prepare our hearts for seeing the inbreaking of God's love. Of being able to see and participate in our own lives in the dream of God. For Jesus keeps reaching towards us who are suffering the nightmare of our times to come up into the light of God's great dream. This sanctuary can be a quiet zone. It can be one of the few places you can step out of the frenetic activity of hollow thank mass. A space that can remind us that here it won't be Christmas until Christmas. That there is opportunity for longing, for anticipation. Or maybe you can discover a quiet moment out of time by lighting a candle on an Advent wreath and saying a prayer in your home. Maybe the wreath on your table in itself can remind you to take a deep breath and stop rushing about for a little while. We are invited to make room for some moments of silence, staying aware, keeping awake, and listening deeply to that dimension of spiritual reality which we call grace of maintaining in the midst of the ordinary a sense of the extraordinary, a recognition of the holy. This is, not, this is a season not only about lights and poinsettias and wreaths and trees. It's about a time of turning our attention back to the one in whom we move and have our being in order to be prepared for the guest who has come, comes even now, and is surely coming soon. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, assuage our blindness and activate our hearts during this Advent so that we may find your presence hidden in ourselves. May we unveil the mystery of Christ with us and work toward the true restoration of the whole world in your image. Let your light shine in our hearts so that we may always know the truth of your love. Amen.